which element is most likely to be used as an industrial industrial catalyst you have sodium you have nickel you have lead you have strontium out of these four you have nickel as a transition element now we've talked about how transition elements are catalysts generally used as catalysts we'd never associated a reason for it but transition elements will generally be more often than not will be catalysts okay so that's one way of answering this particular question the answer is b okay the other way is that nickel we've already seen we've it's one of our quoted examples the three examples we know, should know for the exam nickel is a catalyst for an for the reduction of alkene to an alkane or hydrogenation of an alkene to an alkane same thing same process different words for it okay and the other two were iron for the haper process production of ammonia and vanadium 5 oxide for the contact process which produces sulfuric acid okay so these three we need to know and nickel was asked in this particular question let's move on now limestone reacts with hydrochloric hydrochloric acid limestone is a solid hydrochloric acid is an aqueous solution changing which reaction conditions does not affect the rate of reaction the concentration of the acid well that's going to affected higher the concentration more particles will uh, attack limestone and they'll react more it will be a higher rate of reaction particle size decreasing the particle size of the limestones will give it more surface area more exposure to the hydrochloric acid and will increase the rate of reaction pressure now pressure will affect gases because gases are affected by pressure they compress there are more particles compressed together if they're gases but neither limestone or hydrochloric acid over here is a gas the reactants are not gases pressure will barely have any effect on it you cannot influence solid and uh, liquids with pressure because they're already as compact as they can be right temperature will also react so we have our answer it's c tick c in the graph curve 1 obtain is obtained curve 1 it's a higher rate reaction than curve 2 right curve 1 was obtained by observing the decomposition of 100 cm3 of 1 mole per dm3 of hydrogen peroxide solution catalyzed by magnesium oxide so here's the reaction it's also catalyzed and this is the curve you get theek hai and let's just for the math of it let's figure out how many moles are there in 100 cm3 of 1 mole per dm3 so that's going to be One, oops. That's gonna be one hundred over a thousand times one point zero equals to. I think that's just zero point one moles worth of hydrogen peroxide. Okay, this is the hydrogen peroxide. Let's get graph. This graph one. Which alteration to the original experimental conditions would produce curve two? Now, if you notice curve two. it's a lot slower and like the rate is lower because it's not as steep the, it's a more gradual change and the volume of oxygen produced is more so there's more peroxide involved so adding some 0.1 mole per dm3 cube of hydrogen peroxide solution and i think that that is it not only when you add 0.1 mole you're increasing the quantity of hydrogen peroxide you have 0.1 mole and whatever however amount you add more you get the concentration the you know so this is the concentration so however more you add uh will increase the total amount of 0.1 mole se upar ho jayegi hydrogen peroxide ki amount not the concentration but what's going to happen to the concentration is that you're adding a diluted hydrogen peroxide and the entire overall solution it's getting less concentrated because you're adding a dilute amount of hydrogen peroxide quantity of hydrogen peroxide us mein badh rahi hai but the concentration of the hydrogen peroxide is lowering so a definitely is our answer theek hai a pretty confident a let's exhaust the other options right now b lowering the temperature definitely it'll reduce the steepness of curve 1 but it won't increase the height you'll still produce the same amount of oxygen and water so oxygen right 
because you're collecting oxygen formed. So this curve would kind of look like this. Okay, poorly drawn, but it would kind of end at the same height, right? So using less magnesium oxide, we'll also do this because cat lesser catalyst would catalyze the reaction less, but again, won't change the height. And using a different catalyst, again, will not change the height as well. So A is the only option where the height is also changing. All three, well, not, D might not even, we don't know what catalyst they're using, so we don't know how that behaves. But B and C will also make the curves less steep, right? But it won't increase the amount of volume, the volume of oxygen produced, only A will. Tika, I hope that helps. Let's move on. I just read this question before starting the video and I feel this is an extraordinarily stupid question. I'm just putting that out there. It's a, it has no, it's a pure rata sort of question. No chemistry knowledge required, aside from knowing, ratifying the names of the catalyst. So, sorry in advance. But we have to do it, so let's do it. The contact process, the Haber process, and the hydrogena hydrogenation of fats all involve uh, the use of a catalyst. Which row correctly describes whether the catalyst used in each process is an element or a compound? So we just have to highlight the in theme ke, these three is, uh, catalysts and figure out if they're compounds or not, right? So for the contact process, the catalyst is vanadium five oxide and it's vanadium five oxide, not vanadium two or vanadium oxide five. Okay, vanadium five oxide you call it vanadium 5 oxide because the oxidation number for vanadium is 5 over here if you do, do your math. Uh, for the Haber process, the catalyst is iron, just pure iron. And for the hydrogenation of fats, it's nickel. We saw it in a question earlier as well. So we have an element in, we have elements for the last two. These two are elements, and the first one is a compound. So let's see where that's matching. Compound, oops, compound element element, right? So the answer is B. Which graph correctly shows how the mass of the flask and flask and contents change with time. So mass is change with it. Okay, you see a cotton wool over here, but cotton wool is porous. Uh, this is used to prevent splashing, right? So hydrochloric acid, it can get turned into a very vigorous reaction because a lot of carbon dioxide is being produ produced and that gas just bubbles a lot. So it can splash the water out and give you a false reading on the mass. So they put the cotton wool on top that the excess gas can leave, but not the splash is coming out. So don't get too confused by a cotton wool, like the mass shouldn't change. It will change. Gas is still uh, flowing out of this. Take care. Now, in the start, the reaction will be very fast, so the mass will decrease very quickly. Then it, the decrease of mass, that rate will, will slow down and become a non-zero value because you'll still have solution left over here. It won't all disappear. So the graph that shows this the best is C because it starts off real steep and slow does gradually to a non-zero value, and that's important. A is similar to C where A goes to zero and the mass won't reach zero. For B, it won't be a gradual decrease. And D is the exact opposite of A and C where it says it's gonna start off really slow and just drop down very quickly. Nope. Which piece of apparatus is essential for all rate investigations? A balance, a mass balance? Well, you, we've seen that done without it if you have a gas syringe, right? If you have a gas syringe, you don't really need a balance. So A and B are kind of out. Measuring cylinder, well, I think most of the things, I don't think we've ever used a measuring cylinder in any of our experiments, which we were talking about. But stopwatch, obviously. You cannot, okay, like, I'll stop talking because this question <laughs> does not warrant any more of a response. It's a straightforward question. Let's move on. All right, which row 
has the correct catalyst for the named process. Contact process has vanadium 5 oxide. I think we have a winner in A. Take it. A is the answer. Let's confirm the others as well. B, Haber process. It's not magnesium oxide. It is iron. Hydrogenation of alkenes has nickel, not iron. Photosynthesis, glucose is a product, not a catalyst. A chemist investigates the rate of the reaction between ethene and hydrogen using a nickel catalyst. Chemist carried, the chemist carried out three experiments under the different conditions. Experiment one, two, three. Achha, they're changing one thing at a time. So in the first two experiments, the difference is the pressure. So the pressure is reduced. And while the particle size of the catalyst is exactly the same. So one, two, ko compare karing hai. So exper between experiment one and two, which should be faster? I think two should be slower than one. Or one should be greater than two, right? I'm just matching the statement to have the answers at present. Take it. So let's ignore that one. So one should be faster than two because one in one, the pressure is double while having everything else constant. Take it. Between so can we compare two and three? No, let's compare one and three again, because two and three, everything is different, so we can't really compare it. One and three could compare it. So pressure is the same, but the particle size of the catalyst is larger, so less surface area. Surface area for three is lower than one. So one will be still be greater than three, and for that, that's matching one is greater than three, one is greater than two. The answer is A.